One of the most commonly asked questions and misunderstood things in a real estate transaction is, drum roll please. Uh, can I get a drum roll please? Ah, thank you. One of the most commonly asked questions and misunderstood things in a real estate transaction are the differences between inspection and appraisal. What's interesting is it's not just from my buyer clients. I get that question a lot from my sellers as well. I'm going to take the mystery out of each of those terms so you can understand what they mean and their importance in a transaction. Additionally, I'm going to address what is, what is a new term in this crazy seller's market called an appraisal gap. Stick around, this is some seriously juicy information that could help you win your offer in a highly competitive situation. Welcome back everyone. My name is Jim Davis with Vibrant Homes of Vibrant Realty. I specialize in families on the move, focusing mostly on the western suburbs of the Twin Cities. Okay, let's unbox this mystery by starting out with an inspection. An inspection is the period of the transaction that comes right after you make an offer that gets accepted. In the purchase agreement, it is referred to as the inspection contingency, meaning the deal you just made to buy this home is contingent upon accepting the house in its current condition and having items noted in the inspection they need to be remedied or repaired. This inspection period is typically around three to five days, and that's where you hire an inspector, they come inspect the home, and here's a quick side note. They generally cost about $400 to $450 and should last about three to four hours. And you're generally with them for the last hour or so while they review things in person. It's generally what an inspector or a good inspector should do. Okay, an additional side note. I'm seeing more and more inspections only lasting two hours. Now, I'm not judging, but I don't feel those are very thorough inspections. So just be aware, people. Once they complete the inspection, they'll generate a report that you will review with your agent to decide what items to have the homeowner fix and which items that you can live with. You negotiate those items until you come to an agreement and then you both, you and the seller, will sign an amendment to the purchase agreement which will remove the inspection contingency. From this point moving forward now, the home goes into what's called a pending status. This means that the home is sold pending completion of the loan process that's required by your mortgage company and pending completion of the title search to make sure that the title or the deed of the property is free and clear. And now it's time for the appraisal. An appraisal is a market evaluation done by an independent home appraiser. What they do is they look at homes around where you are buying that are similar in size and amenities that have sold in the recent past to get an idea of what the current market value of the home is. This is something that the mortgage company or your lender, they order this to have done on the house to know how much to loan for your home. If you're paying 100% cash, for example, there will not be an appraisal because there isn't any loan going against the property, so there's no need for an appraisal to happen. Of course, you can order one if you want for yourself, and they are generally around 500 bucks, give or take. Once the appraisal is completed, you and your lender both will get a copy. And here's where things can get a little sticky in this current marketplace. The current market is forcing people to buy homes generally over market value. How this relates to an appraisal is that if your home that you're purchasing is $300,000, for example, and your down payment for a conventional loan is 3%, that means the lender will only loan you 97% of the value of the home. This is the sticky part. Are you ready for the math? Here we go. 97% of $300,000 is $291,000. If an appraisal comes in at say $295,000 and not the $300 purchase price that you agreed to buy the house at, 
the lender is only going to lend you 97% of $295,000, the current market value of the home. So, 97% of $295,000 is $286,150. And remember the $291,000 loan amount of the $300,000? That's out the window. And the new loan amount is only going to be $286,150. The difference between the wanted appraisal of 291 and the real appraisal of $286,150 or $150 is $4,850. That amount is now the appraisal gap. Whew. Is your head spinning yet? Mine is. Okay, so now what? In a normal market, if there's an appraisal gap, the buyer and seller agree to bridge this gap in one of three ways. One. The seller reduces the price of the amount of the home by the appraisal gap number. Number two, the buyer contributes more cash in the amount of the appraisal gap number. Or three, both the seller comes down in price and the buyer contributes more cash to match the appraisal gap number. However, it has to happen to make the lender a happy camper. Okay, so let me share what's really going on today. It's an extremely strong seller's market just about everywhere in the country cities and rural communities alike. What this means is generally you're gonna to have to offer over market value for the property. Now this is not to be confused with over asking price. Market value is what the lender will give you for a loan. Asking price is the price that the homeowner and the listing agent feel like putting on the house when it goes on the market. Now I'm not judging here because they may or may not have a strategy, however, I've seen games being played with asking and listing price. So be aware people, okay? Know what the market value is on the home that you're buying. Sorry about the sidebar, I'm just trying to be thorough. Okay, back to offering over market value. Because you most likely have to offer over market value, odds are you're going to have, have to end up with an appraisal gap just like we talked about. So how does a person mitigate or defend against an appraisal gap? I can tell you in one word, cash. However, there is a strategy in writing an offer to mitigate an appraisal gap. You just can't have your agent write your offer that you're going to put 20 or 30 or 40% down. Nope. There's more to it than that and you're going to want to write this down. Seriously people. Pause the video, get a pen and paper. Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, ready? You have to write what's called an appraisal gap guarantee. Oh my gosh, what is that? An appraisal gap guarantee is quite simple, but it needs to be written in an amendment to the purchase agreement. You do not want the sellers to assume that they will like your offer just because you say you're going to put 30% down and truthfully, you don't have to. And most seller's agent knows this. So 30% down should be plenty of cash to cover most appraisal gaps, but it depends upon the craziness of your market. Here in Minnesota, that's generally enough. Now. Saying you're going to put 30% down in the offer is not guaranteeing the seller that you are going to put that money down. Again, you don't have to. You just have to put down enough money to satisfy the lender to close the loan. Let's use our $300,000 home purchase as an example again. Say you're going to put down 10%, which is $30,000. In this scenario, where the home appraised at $295,000 instead of the three, the gap is $4,850. You would have more than enough cash to cover the 3% down payment of nine grand and the appraisal gap of $4,850. An appraisal gap guarantee is a simple statement saying you will guarantee to put down a certain amount of cash, but you need to word it the right way. What this appraisal gap does is it guarantees in writing that the seller is going to get their over market value offer, which is really all they want. That's the purpose of an appraisal gap guarantee. If you are thinking of selling your home and are looking for tips on how to sell it for top dollar fast, 
Check out my other video where I discuss my top 10 tips for staging. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. I appreciate your time today and thanks for watching.